when I looked at that video, and that was one of the first time that was the first time I knew that WTC seven had gone down when I saw the Joinko video. Right. And I looked at that, and I've seen buildings go down. I've seen some smaller buildings burn. You know, pieces flake off. They fall off to the side. And I saw that thing go down as a straight arrow, and I, I heard Joenko, you know, through the English subtitles on it, not being aware that that was WTC7 either. Look, what a professional job, you know, clearly. It's going straight down like an arrow, period. It's going from the bottom down. That was a control of demolition. Whatever one might say about the impact and the aftermath of the impact, the maximum burning temperature of jet fuel versus the minimum melting temperature of structural steel, whatever one says about that, that third one going down is not, as I said yesterday on, on another interview, that's not a smoking gun. That's a smoking artillery brigade. That's yeah. it. That is the death of the case. And I looked at that, and I said, now, why? Why is there so much concern in in the... And I didn't even know the phrase 9-11 truth movement then. You know, why is there so much concern among those questioning the, the government's case on this? I said, you know, you're looking at that. How can you not know it's a controlled demolition? And if it's a controlled demolition, if it was wired for controlled demolition, then the other two buildings were too. Indeed. This is not and, you know, that, that might be a good place to, to take a pause here. We have reached the halfway point ready for a five-minute break. Uh, and I'm sure the audience uh, has probably agreed so far. Um, they've all seen Building 7, and uh, it is the Achilles heel in the, of the official story. We'll be back in a moment for more. I'm Kevin Barrett. I'm talking with Dr. Alan Sabrowski, former director of the U.S. Army War College. We'll be right back. You're listening to No Lies Radio, coming to you 24-7 from the San Francisco Bay Area, north of Berkeley. Your radio station for the truth, peace, justice, freedom, and more power to the people. Welcome back. This is the Kevin Barrett Show on No Lies Radio. No Lies is based in Berkeley, and I will be in Northern California uh, later this week, flying out tomorrow. If you want the details, please check out my website, Truth jihad.com. I will be talking in Santa Cruz tomorrow night, and uh, I'll be in, in San Francisco, rather Berkeley, the, uh, on Thursday, and then doing talks in Sacramento on Friday and Saturday. Once again, that's truthjihad.com. Well, today I'm talking with uh, Dr. Ellen Sabrowski, uh, the kind of latest and most controversial uh, uh, military affairs expert to jump in to the 9-11 truth controversies with his unequivocal statement that the Mossad from Israel did 9-11. Uh, all kinds of flack flying around in the truth movement because of that. Uh, by the way, I need to correct his title. Uh, he was the director of studies of the Strategic Studies Institute at the U.S. Army War College. I left a couple of those uh, studies out the first time. I it. <laughs> so, Alan, uh, <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. Building 7 is the uh, the smoking gun, the Achilles heel. Uh, it's, it's the one that you just can't you know you you can't see how anybody could miss it uh so but then the, uh, how, how do we go from all of these pieces of evidence that you've cited and, and the many more i'm sure that you've seen uh to the hard and fast conclusion that this was the israeli Mossad, uh given that so much of this happened you know under the watch of various american officials the two are not the two are not mutually exclusive and the the, the statement that I made was very direct, and I meant it. Um, it was also incomplete. And an article I'm, I'm finishing up and I've got off to the editors uh, for publication in a few days, you know, we'll develop that in greater detail. Um, let me sort of work through, if I could, how I, how I came into this, into that conclusion. Okay. Uh, we've got WT7 absolutely as a controlled demolition. By extension, logically, if it was wired for demolition, so were the other two. But even if we just take WT-7, okay, let's just take WTC-7. What, what is absolutely clear is that even if giving the government the benefit of the doubt, which is something I don't do as April 15th approaches, but giving the government the benefit of the doubt on this, 
even if there were 19 Arab hijackers of some name in those four planes, neither they nor the remaining al-Qaeda apparatus on the ground had the expertise or access to wire a single building for controlled demolition. They could not have done it. Agreed. They could not have done it. I mean, the security people for the World Trade Center, Kroll Associates, I mean, the notion that somehow there would be a, be a, a group of Arabs wandering around inside World Trade Center buildings, opening up the walls, putting in demolition, stringing the cables and the detonators, you know, on buildings that were occupied and secured 24-7 is a little bit past, past my comprehension. Well, it's not past Noam Chomsky's comprehension. He actually told me that uh, if we prove that these were demolitions, that just proves that bin Laden did it. Well, you have to understand, I'm, I, I was an unreconstructed Marine Corps Vietnam veteran, and Noam Chomsky was one of those I would have put alongside Jane Fonda. <laughs> okay. Okay. Whatever his positions here, and in fact, I've mentioned to a couple of people that, uh, you know, I, I find myself on the same side of the Palestinian issue with Noam Chomsky, and I was all, and that, that made me as uneasy as uh, uh, John Ashbrook, a uh, very conservative Republican congressman, when he said he'd vote on an issue, and, and he and Bella Abzug would be on the only side of the issue, and they would look at each other and wonder which one of them was wrong. Um, but some, but <laughs> in someone, this case, you're right, and Chomsky's wrong about 9-11. I, I think I would be on this one on it. Because, but it, and it's not just that. It's, there's a lot of demolitions people out there in the world. This is not like you know people who can put out fires in oil fields. Um, there's a lot of demolitions experts out there in the private sector as well as in, in military and intelligence agencies. So, I mean, the expertise was there to do it. The access wasn't there. I mean, the... Al-Qaeda people simply would not have had the access to get into these buildings, do it, and set it up. Remember, think of their skill levels. Think of the skill levels that I mentioned earlier. You know, slug explosives into a truck, hit a building or a ship. Tie explosives to you, blow it. From there to a very sophisticated wiring, and it had to be wired carefully so the building went down, straight down, you know. This wasn't just putting explosives on one side and blowing it over. It well, these were putting, the tallest buildings ever demolished. Uh, yeah, but even, even but, seven. Right, but even seven, even seven, you know, which was a you know, third after the other two. But even building seven, you know, that came down like an arrow. And that took a remarkable degree of sophistication and skill to be able to do that. So expertise, lots of it out there. But not al-Qaeda. Nothing we've seen since indicates that any of them have that. Not what they've done not their subsequent attacks, not these IEDs supposedly popped alongside roads. Not even the underwear bummer? <laughs> oh, let me, let me tell you. Uh, they, just, they just had something on the news this morning about, about a new concern about uh, uh, terrorists using breast implants with explosives, and God knows what they're going to do with that if you had a Dolly Parton out there. You could probably take you could probably take down another World Trade Center building. It's really pretty pathetic to go from uh, you know blowing up three giant skyscrapers and hitting the Pentagon somehow to uh, to blowing up little pieces of people's uh, sensitive bodily parts. Oh, but but it, but it does does a wonderful job, particularly over the holidays. Think about that, you know, of keeping the threat up. It's, you know, Orwell's 1984 comes comes to life. You know, it keeps Indeed. people's apprehension up, justifies more concerns, all the anxieties go up, people get unhappy. It's a wonderful time to do it, and there's no loss, Indeed. except for the person who's doing it. Okay, so, but, so back, okay, back so, to those okay, so, we, so we've got, to, got the access. Okay. Third, so, so someone other than the people in the planes and al-Qaeda had to do it, simply as a function of the security, the access, the control, motivation. One of the first things that I was taught many, many years ago in intelligence school, uh, in the Marines, and that is not an oxymoron. Marine intelligence is not an oxymoron. Um, and later, as, as a strategic analyst, is when you're, when you're looking at a situation, the first thing you ask yourself is, who benefits? Right. Who benefits? Who's, who's going to win?